Two hand cutting tools that are frequently used in the machine shop are hand hacksaws and hand files. The usefulness of these simple hand tools is improved with knowledge of the tool, selection of the proper tool for the job, and experience of the operator. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to write down shop safety procedures, identify the parts and uses of the hand hacksaw, choose the proper blade for sawing different materials, identify the parts and uses of hand files, and write down techniques of filing work held in a vise. There are some safety precautions that you should observe when working with hand cutting tools in the shop. Some of these safety procedures are to always wear your safety glasses, remove jewelry, keep your sleeves above the elbows, and always use handles on a file. Hand hacksaws are quite often used in the shop. The proper selection of blades and proper use of the saw can greatly improve its efficiency. Hand hacksaws have four main parts. The handle, a frame, which is sometimes adjustable, prongs or pins to hold the blade, and a tightening screw and nut for pulling the blade taut for sawing. Hacksaws usually come in 8, 10, or 12 inch lengths. These designations refer to the distance between the center of the holes in the blade, which is mounted in the frame. Hacksaw blades for general shop use are one half inch wide and 25 thousandths of an inch thick. The number of teeth per inch on a hacksaw blade is called the pitch. Most standard hacksaw blades will come in 14, 18, 24, or 32 teeth per inch. Select blades according to the type of metal to be sawed. A coarse blade or a blade with a 14 pitch cuts fast and would be used on softer metals. The finer pitch blades will cut slower and should be used on harder metals or on tool steels. A 32 tooth pitch blade would be used for thin sheet metal under 18 gauge or for small tubing and conduit. When cutting thin gauge sheet metal, always keep two or more teeth in contact with the metal at all times. If your blade has too coarse a pitch, it will drop on the work which could break the blade. The teeth on a hacksaw blade are bent out or set in alternating sequence so that the kerf is wider than the body of the blade. This feature keeps the blade from binding in the cut. To mount a blade in the hacksaw, select the type of blade for the particular type of metal to be cut. You can refer to the machinery's handbook or textbooks for this type of information. Then set the frame for the length of blade you are mounting. Hook the blade over the front pin and then onto the pin with a tightening screw and nut on it. The teeth must point away from the operator since the force of the cut is exerted away from the operator as the saw is pushed through the work. Tighten the adjusting screw to hold the blade taut and straight. Do not over tighten the adjusting screw as this could bend the frame or break off the pins holding the blade. Mount the workpiece to be cut in a vise. Be sure it is securely held in the vise because if the workpiece slips, you may break the hacksaw blade. Mount the work so that the saw cut will be as close to the vise jaws as possible. One quarter to one half inch is a good distance. Hold the saw securely by the handle in your right hand, if you are right-handed, with your left hand over the front of the frame. You will probably be most comfortable standing with your feet slightly apart and well balanced so that you can move your arms back and forth with the blade. To start the cut, begin with short strokes. As soon as you have the blade started or about the depth of the teeth on the blade, extend the stroke so that you are using the full length of the blade. When sawing on a workpiece, apply pressure on the forward stroke. 
and lift the hacksaw blade slightly on the backstroke. Do not apply pressure to the blade on the backstroke, since this will cause dulling of the blade. It is sometimes necessary to use a slightly shorter stroke when finishing the cut so that the workpiece does not fall off onto the floor. The hand hacksaw can be a very handy tool in the shop when it is used efficiently and properly. It can save you time by cutting small work by hand rather than setting it up in a large power hacksaw. Hand hacksaws can be used very effectively for cutting off work of small diameters on the lathe. They can also be used efficiently for making internal cuts on a workpiece. First, holes must be drilled in the workpiece. Then the hacksaw blade is removed from the frame and inserted into the hole. The blade is then reattached to the frame to make the cut. The only limitation here is the distance from the blade to the frame. Most hacksaws can be set up with a blade turned 90 degrees to allow for cutting into corners or around the edge of a workpiece. Files are used for changing the shape of a workpiece or for making a finish on a machined workpiece. Files come in many different lengths and shapes. The parts of a file are the tang, the length of the file, the heel, the edge, the face, and the point. Files come in many shapes, such as flat, mill, slim taper, round, square, and half round. They also come in special types, such as thread files, which are made to the particular size of thread being filed and are generally used for cleaning threads which have been burred or bent over. Files also come in sets, such as Swiss pattern files, and many types of files used by toolmakers. Files are classified according to their tooth forms and the degree of coarseness of the teeth. These include the single cut, double cut, bastard cut, second cut, and smooth cut. When you are filing, the work must always be held securely in a vise or some other holding device. Select the proper type of file for the filing operation you are going to perform. For rough filing, you generally use a double cut file. Never use a file without a file handle. If a manufactured file handle is not available, drill a piece of wood that has been shaped to make a handle and put it over the tang. When you are filing, the metal may stick to the file. This is called pinning of the file. If this occurs, use chalk to lubricate the file to prevent the metal from sticking to it. The file must be periodically cleaned of chips since they will scratch the metal that is being filed. Use a stiff brush or a file card, which is equipped with steel bristles on one side and soft bristles on the other side for brushing away the chips. Hold the file firmly, moving the brush back and forth along the teeth to remove the chips. Most file cards are equipped with a small pick for removing those particles which cannot be removed by the brush. When you are rough filing, always use a crossing stroke and apply pressure on the forward stroke. Maintain a comfortable position, usually with your feet slightly apart. For a right-handed person, a good position is to stand with your left foot slightly in front of the right. Grasp the file handle with your right hand and hold the file point with your left hand or fingers. File across the work in one direction and back in the other direction. Never file continuously in one direction when rough filing, since this will make the work uneven and out of square. Generally, shorter strokes are used in rough filing than in finished filing. 
Remember to periodically clean the file with a file card to obtain a good surface finish. When the workpiece has been rough file to size, check for squareness using either a machinist square or the straight edge of a steel rule, depending upon what surface finish and squareness you want. To obtain a smooth finish on the workpiece, use a technique called draw filing. Draw filing is done by grasping the file firmly at both ends and alternately pushing and pulling the file sideways across the work. You will notice that the file is held at right angles to the work. You generally use a single cut file for this operation. Draw filing gives a much smoother surface than straight filing and it does not remove as much material as rough filing. The draw file must be continually cleaned to obtain the desired surface finish without scratches. To file a radius on the corner of a workpiece, set the workpiece with the radius to the top of the vise and rough file the radius to size. Check the piece with a radius gauge. Then use a single cut file and draw file the workpiece for size and finish. Use push-pull strokes over the radius, moving from the side of the workpiece to the end and then back to the side. Check the radius. If material needs to be removed at some point on the radius, use short push-pull strokes at that point. Longer push-pull strokes over the length of the radius can be used to blend the finish with the sides. Now let's review what you've seen in this videotape. First, when working in the machine shop, there are some safety precautions which must be followed. Always wear safety glasses, remove jewelry, roll up your sleeves, and never use a file without a file handle. When using hacksaws, select the proper blade for the particular operation and type of metal to be cut. Remember that blades come in different lengths and different pitches. Hand files come in many different lengths and shapes for the particular job to be done. Rough filing is done with short crossing strokes. And draw filing is performed with a file crossways to the work using a push-pull stroke with pressure applied in both directions. The proper use of hand cutting tools in the machine shop is important to every machinist. Skill in the use of these tools will come with experience, making you a better machinist and improving your work output.